We all have owned a video game at some point, we can all be honest with each other. If you've owned more than three Game Boy games, at least two of them are getting lost. Common misconception is I don't play video games, I only buy them. The person that started that misconception is me. I swear, uh, every video game I buy, I buy with the intent to play at some point. You know, I, I want to experience everything in my collection. And just because, like, oh, I collect video games, whatever, uh, that doesn't mean I don't want to play them. I've been going through a ton of my backlog recently, and it's a wonderful feeling. It's just the problem is it can get tiring to just play through a video game, well, like one video game after another, after another, after another. Sometimes I just need to pump the brakes, and I need to play Galaga Galaxy and Arcade Classics 3. It's, it's a great idea to just, like, collect the games that you want to experience. Even if you want to collect everything, you know, I want to own every single Wii U game ever released on this planet. And you know what? I'm playing through every last damn one of them. But I want to clarify that I I'm not trying to say that you're doing it wrong if you're uh, only collecting games that and you're, you're not really planning on playing them. You know, you just get joy out of collecting them. You know, it, it, there's no right or wrong way to collect. Uh, you know, if you just want to collect games to enjoy the art and or just enjoy them on your shelf, whatever, you know, it's just like whatever makes you happy that's up to you uh you know but this is just me personally speaking as in at this very moment because you know sometimes i might buy games that you know like i'm like oh well i really like this art but you know i can't physically i can't play the game because you know i don't own the console or or uh, you know it may not be my style but at, at least at the moment i'm in a very I want to buy games that I want to experience kind of mood, you know, like I, I want to buy these games and I want to put them on the shelf, uh, but I also want to experience them. I'm kind of in a, you know, I want to check that experience off my bucket list kind of thing. But one part about collecting that kind of goes hand in hand with being able to experience the games is being able to just see the games on your shelf. If I walk across my game room and I see that I own like this Game Boy game, I'm much more likely to remember to pop it in and give it a play. Uh, you know, but the problem is, a lot of video games are just not in cartridges or cases or what have you that work well on a shelf or work well to be kind of displayed on a bookcase or whatever. It's really hard to display Game Boy games. So most people, including me, just kind of throw them in a shoebox or a Ziploc bag and just kind of like, that. those are my Game Boy games. And at that point, it doesn't even become like a collector's mentality. It's just not fun to have all of these Game Boy games just in a, in a box or a bag somewhere because you kind of forget about them. It makes it harder to just, you know, play the game you want to play when they're just all kind of jumbled up in a random sock. So while it's really nice from a collectible standpoint to just have them displayed, it's also nice from a playability standpoint to be able to go to your shelf and pick up a Game Boy game that you want to play without having to scrounge through a bunch of them in a garbage bag. So I kind of wanted to just talk about custom game labels and cases just all the different variations that uh, I've come across of uh, ways to display your games, uh, specifically games that are much harder to display. You know, games on the NES, SNES, and then especially when, you know, CD and DVD cases start to be used. Those, I don't care about those. Those are pretty damn easy to display. They have end labels or they're in specific cases that are easy to pop on a shelf. I'm talking about games that are very difficult to display. So, Game Boy, and the first one we're gonna talk about, N64. So, Nintendo 64 cartridges are creeps. So, they don't have end labels, and on top of that, they, they're in this weird shape that's just kind of like inherently hard to kind of stack. So, I've seen many people uh, put them on shelves like that, uh, but I, I don't do that. I just kind of put them up like this. Uh, because I just find that to be, you know, a bit more, I don't know, natural. Uh, but of course, the problem is they don't have end labels. So what do you do? So back in the day, I used to uh, just kind of print off paper. Uh, I, I would just type up the game name in a Word document, nothing fancy. And I would just cut it out and uh, put it on with scotch tape. And uh, it did the job, you know, like, th that's the thing. Like, it, sometimes you just kind of want something to be functional. You don't really care if it's flashy. Uh, and that did the job, but the problem is, you know, scotch tape doesn't really do do, do that well. You get a bunch of dog hair all over it, uh, but of course it just didn't look that great. And especially considering I was just cutting them out by hand, uh, you know, it wasn't the most just uh, straight cuts. And it just ended up looking not that great. So 
Uh, one solution, and uh, in my opinion, one of the only major solutions, is to buy custom end labels. Uh, now, these are pretty much available everywhere. Uh, I don't even remember the seller that I got these from, so I'm terribly sorry. Uh, but these are available pretty much by many Etsy shop owners. Uh, I just look up Nintendo 64 end labels on Google, or specifically Etsy, because I got these on Etsy, and you will find numerous results. And uh, what these are, pretty much, I, I assume most of them are like this, where uh, you just get the entire N64 library. You get you get every single game released on the in the N64's library, at least here in North America. I'm sure you can get Japan and European sets, uh, but... Since the N64 library was so small, around only a little over 300 games, uh, it's pretty easy for them to just release the, to give you the entire library of games, uh, because it's only a couple of pages. And, uh, yeah, when you pop them on, they look stellar. It's literally just, you know, you peel it off and you pop it on. It is also a really fun, uh, just kind of like, it's just a satisfying kind of checklist feeling because since you get the entire N64 library, whenever you get a new N64 game, it's kind of fun to look for it on the, uh, on the sticker sheet and peel it off. It's kind of like checking one off the box. Even though I'm not going for a full N64 set, it's still kind of a fun feeling, you know, it adds an element a fun to buying N64 games. But at that point, there's another solution that uh, some people go with uh, for these cartridge-based games, specifically N64, but I've seen them do it with uh, NES, SNES, and many others. And that is custom game cases for these things. Uh, which, weirdly enough, uh, I've seen these things at game stores, I've seen these things, like, I've, I, I've gotten this one, I, I didn't go out of my way to get this one, I just bought this game on eBay, and, uh, it just came in this custom case. And, uh, that is one of these guys. Uh, these are fan-made cases that, uh, you know, you can pop, in this case, a Super Nintendo game in, and, uh, you get a plastic, sh uh, clamshell to uh, protect your game in. Uh, these I'm not super into for uh, very large games, you know. A game like a Super Nintendo game, this already has an end label, and uh, you know, I, also I'm not really a big fan of just the design. It's just kind of a weird looking thing where I, I frankly would have probably preferred if it was just the traditional Super Nintendo cover art, but just, you know, uh, this, you know, this way. But I understand why some people would like this. Uh, I just find it a bit unnecessary because, like, I, I would want to own a case like this for every Super Nintendo game I have, and that's probably, like, 50-plus games. So it's just uh, going out of my way to find, uh, get cases for all of those when I really don't need it. I find this to be much a much more lucrative thing when there's smaller games, you know, portable games. Game Boy, Game Gear, Game Boy Color, all of that stuff where those are tiny games that came in cardboard boxes originally, so it's really hard to display them already. Super Nintendo and NES games, you don't really have a problem with uh, with displaying them, really. Uh, I've seen a couple different uh, options for this. I think one of them was called Bitbox. I don't know if they're still making them, but they might be. And uh, I understand, you know, it's just like, it's kind of nice to have like a big thing on the shelf for like, oh, you know, you can very clearly see. This is Mega Man Soccer. I'm not gonna play that. Because Super Nintendo games on the shelf are a bit harder to see. Uh, the fonts are smaller and, you know, it's just all black labels. So, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to see from farther away. Uh, but Super Nintendo games, I, I've never really had a problem with displaying, really, in my opinion. Uh, this just seems more like if you want to give the games cases, you can do that. But I find it to be a bit superfluous. Now, oftentimes when I buy kind of a bigger games on eBay, they uh, they often come with these protective cases. This one is for a Vita game, so uh, pretty much you put your Vita game, uh, and I, I've gotten this for pretty much every kind of game imaginable. Like, I, I've seen cases like this for uh, regular DVD size stuff, so you know, like Wii U, Wii, uh, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, original Xbox, all that kind of stuff. And then I've also gotten them for NES games, SNES games, N64 games. Uh, you know, these are okay, you know, like, I, I just don't use them, really. 
uh, you know, I, I'm fine with just putting the game on the shelf as is. It, these are just things that you will come across uh, if you're buying bigger, uh, more, more elusive games. Sometimes they'll give you these with like games that I'm like, what, what the hell? It's like the seller saying, you son of a bitch, don't you dare touch Uncharted. It's a nice gesture from sellers. I'm definitely uh, open to getting these because, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a nice thing where it shows that they really care about the quality of the game and they want to ensure that it, you know, gets to you in a very doable fashion, but I like to have my games on my shelf uh, in pretty uh, easy to play ways where you just pull it off, you open it up, and you play the game. Uh, I don't really need the protective case most of the time, but you know, for the bigger games, not a bad option. However, I've been delaying the inevitable. What the hell are you gonna do about that? Portable games, specifically Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, these have always been a nightmare to collect for because they're so tiny. And what are you gonna do? Like when you get one, are you just gonna throw it in a bag? You know, like it's just not fun because you kind of forget sometimes what games you own. You, you, you lose games easily. It's way nicer to have the cases, but the problem is the original cases for these games are just cardboard boxes. It's really hard to get them. And on top of that, when if you do end up getting them, like, it's just kind of a nuisance, you know, you're gonna leave them in there all the time and whenever you want to play the game You have to you know pull out the cardboard and make sure you don't crumple it or make sure that you don't rip it You don't you don't do anything bad to it because that stuff is gonna wear down over time. It's just cardboard So yeah, it's just like these most of the time you're gonna buy them loose and they're just gonna go into They're going to go into boxes. However, there have been multiple solutions to this problem Specifically with original Game Boy game, I've seen a lot of people do something along the lines of putting these in cassette tape holders. Uh, that, that was always kind of a cute way to go about it. Cassette tape holders, roughly, you know, they're, they're pretty tiny, but they do hold original Game Boy games. At least, you know, these of these types of dimensions, you know, uh, when it comes to the games of the type that are bigger and, and are rumble pack supported, I, I, I believe those should fit. Uh, you know, maybe cartridges like the Game Boy Camera, that that probably won't fit, but regardless, most games that are about this size, they'll fit in cassette tape holders. I've also seen some people do something along the lines of uh, spice racks, uh, or, or racks along those lines, and just kind of propping up the Game, Boys, uh, Game Boy games like that on spice racks. Uh, that also works as well, uh, you know, if, if you want to do it that way. Of course, like, uh, stacking the games like this, you know, one at a time, uh, that, that's gonna take up a lot of space, uh, and, uh, you're gonna need a very specific setup for that to work. Uh, you know, it might not work in your specific bookcase kind of thing, uh, but that is another potential method of displaying Game Boy games. But the one I was raised on, uh, was right under our noses every time. DS game cases. You ever notice that DS game cases always had a slot for GBA games? Uh, so that is an obvious solution for the very least GBA games. You take a bunch of uh, DS game cases, of course, let's pretend this one is uh, is a completely blank case. You know, you take all the uh, all the stuff out. There are loads of blank DS cases you can buy on eBay for dirt cheap. Uh, some of them, you know, may be official, you know, you know, they're official if they say the Nintendo, they have Nintendo logos and all that on it. Uh, and you probably want to go for those because those are going to be much higher quality. Uh, you're going to find some cheap third party ones and those will do the trick. But, you know, these are obviously going to be much higher quality. But, yeah, DS game, uh, game Boy Advance games fit perfectly in them. Of course, it looks a little like, you know, like you're missing something. But these have always been an excellent solution. Uh, the problem is... Not all DS cases had a GBA slot. So just because you find a bunch of, you know, empty DS cases, uh, eventually Nintendo got rid of the GBA slot in all of them. Uh, around the, you know, probably around the 2010, 2011 mark, whenever they would print new DS games, uh, they didn't come with a GBA slot inside them. Uh, so, you know, that kind of makes it a little bit harder, but keep in mind most DS cases have the GBA slot so it's not a huge deal. Of course you also have to print off your own box art here uh, however pretty much most GBA games have DS oriented box art options out there. There's a website called The Cover Project 
and uh, you can look up pretty much uh, not only GBA games, but pretty much most game systems, you will find uh, fan scanned box art. And GBA box art uh, often has dimensions that fit DS cases. Uh, so then you can print off your own, you can buy some glossy photo paper, uh, or just regular paper if you don't really mind, and you can print that off, you know, just get the right dimensions for a DS case and then cut it out, and then boom, you have GBA games. Uh, like I said, of course, that is a bit of work, but all of this is gonna be a bit of work, so, you know, tough sh**. So, that is definitely a solution to GBA games. However, uh, regular Game Boy games or Game Boy Color, it's a bit more of a tricky subject with these. Uh, I prefer the idea that, you know, like, hey, every single Game Boy game, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, I have in these style cases. I would absolutely love for the Game Boy games that I own to fit in, you know, cases like this. The problem is there's there's no way you can really get this to work. You can kind of, you know, you can kind of do that, but like you're you're a fucking creep that way. And also, you know, you might damage the game, you might damage the case. Not a great solution. I've seen some people do something along the lines of they they cut they take a box cutter. I, I've seen like YouTube videos where people like do this. And it's terrifying. And you know, if you do this, more power to you because I could never do this because this this takes a lot of determination. But I've seen some people say like, oh yeah, Game Boy games are in here. You just have to take your box cutter and carve out this plastic, you know, cut this plastic out, cut this plastic out, and then you take foam and then you cut an insert for uh, a Game Boy game in the foam and then you put the foam in here and then there you go. What the hell is your problem? So, these cases, while they work, uh, they're not ideal for everything. Uh, mainly just loose Game Boy Advance games are perfect for these. But even then, uh, the manuals are a bit of a tricky subject. Like, if you own your manual, uh, you can you can store it like this, but even then, you know, it's kind of, you know, it, it is kind of like lifted up by this thing. Uh, and you cannot store it like this, it's, that ain't gonna work. So, uh, it does work, but it's a bit weird. I used to store all my Game Boy Advance games like this, uh, and it did do the job, but eventually I started to get kind of lazy, and uh, it was just kind of more of a nuisance to have to print off Game Boy Advance cover art each and every single time. Uh, so eventually, I kind of stopped doing it, and I just kind of I just kind of threw my Game Boy Advance games in bags, which, you know, I, I actually lost, I, like, I, I lost a couple Game Boy Advance games. I don't know where some of them are. Uh, there, there's some that I bought recently, and I'm just like, I, I don't know where that, I don't know where this game went. Uh, so, that can be an issue, and, uh, you know, laziness got the better of me, but, uh, I found a new hope. This is one of the best solutions I've ever seen. Of course, this is a bit more of a pricey one, but, uh, I think it's well worth the investment, and, uh, this is custom game cases, uh, that's their entire website, and, uh, yeah, they, they make custom game cases for all of this kind of stuff. This is Game Boy Advance, and of course, Game Boy Advance is something that, you know, everybody can, uh, you know, every anybody can do with uh, an original DS case. But, uh, these are a bit more tailor-made for Game Boy Advance, where, oh man, look at that! Fits perfectly, and uh, they do this thing where uh, they, they offer the blank cases, you know, you can get this case blank, but they also offer select uh, games uh, printed. They, they'll print the box art for you. So, uh, I just usually order the, the game, uh, that I need. So, I needed Advance Wars, and, uh, lucky enough, they had Advance Wars, the box art. Uh, so, uh, they'll do the, they'll send this to you, they'll send the box, but they'll also have the box art printed off as well for you. Uh, which is super, super nice, because, uh, the way, uh, they're printing is, uh, much better than I could ever do with my printer. But Game Boy Advance is something anybody can really do. Uh, but as you can see, uh, these cases can hold a lot more. Oh, this is so good. I'm ab I absolutely love this. The fact that I have, uh, DS-sized cases for original Game Boy games. And, of course, Game Boy Color as well. This style of case fits, uh, both Game Boy and Game Boy Color. And I couldn't be happier to have Game Boy, Game Boy Color boxes. Uh, that I can display these games in. It makes it so much easier to just go to my shelf and play some of these games, and that's what I want to do. Even though, like, I buy a bunch of these games, but I want to play these games. I want to go to my shelf and be like, you know what? I want to play Oracle of Seasons. You know what? I want to play Metroid 2. Because I'm a 
fucking masochist. And yeah, their print quality is fantastic. You know, it's not like 100% like, oh man, this is like Nintendo quality printing, you know, something that you'd see on like a Switch game, but it's still really good. Uh, and overall, I, I am incredibly, incredibly happy with these. Uh, I believe this, the, the plastic that they use is probably not nearly as, as quality as something like a DS case. I had one of them crack, but I've had, I've had PS3 game cases crack. I've had PS4 game cases crack, you know. I think that's just kind of, it comes with the territory of, you know, plastic cases. Uh, I, I personally buy each game, you know, like by itself, you know, I, I don't buy the blank cases. I, I buy, you know, the games that I have. Uh, and they don't have everything, so that's kind of an issue. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just something. But uh, pretty much most of the games that I've gotten are available on their website. Uh, but hopefully they kind of get through the entire libraries of these things. But I do have a couple of problems with uh, their stuff. Uh, and it's mostly, mostly just from like a potential standpoint where I, I want them to do more. But I, I feel like sometimes like they, they focus on some things that I'm like, come on guys. Like for an example, on their website, they have, uh, you know, they have Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. And I, I think, you know, that's the stuff that you really need to focus on because these things need cases. <laughs> like these, they really do need cases. Uh, but they have a, a huge section for Sega Genesis. And I recently just bought some where it's just like, uh, I bought Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic 3D Blast and Comic Zone and uh, the Genesis 6 pack. And those games never got like plastic clamshell cases. So I bought those with their plastic clamshell cases because I was like, oh yeah, of course, like that would be awesome to have a Sonic and Knuckles game case because that only came in a cardboard box. But then they have like a bunch of games that already have plastic cases available. Um, of course, you know, like, it's a whole thing where it's just like those plastic cases or specifically those box arts may be hard to get. You know, obviously the games are more cheap loose uh, and you may just be like, hey, I just want a case for this thing. I don't care if it's the original real deal. I just need a case. I totally get that. But I would just prefer if they prioritized fully games that never got cases. And I know they definitely do, but there's a bunch of systems that they could definitely focus on uh, and they could introduce, but uh, you know, they, they have NES and SNES and N64 and Sega Genesis that they do. And I'm just like, eh, but those, those don't really need cases in my opinion. Maybe N64 and NES and SNES, uh, giving those games cases feels like more of a novelty to me. I know stuff like Neo Geo Pocket or Atari Lynx and, or even stuff like uh, Sega 32X or, or whatnot. Those don't need, like those, those don't have a huge audience but I think those need cases more than a lot of the other uh, systems that they have. Uh, Sega 32X only had cardboard boxes and the games don't have any end labels. So uh, I, I just feel like those would be prime for some plastic cases. But at the very least, we got Virtual Boy. They even gave it a red case and all of that. And it's so good to just have these games just displayed because uh, I own the whole North American library. That's right, I have a huge c But the Virtual Boy library is so small that uh, even though I don't own all like the games, I only have like a couple that I don't own from Japan. Uh, and there's like another not for resale game that I don't own. But uh, other than that, uh, I own everything. And, uh, but, but I just bought straight up the entire library in case form because, hey, on the off chance that I do eventually get every single Virtual Boy game, I have every single case. And, uh, it's like five bucks to get a case with the artwork printed off. And in my opinion, that is worth it. But of course, that depends on, you know, if, if that's worth it to you to pay five bucks to get a case, uh, a high quality print for the box art and then a case that will house, uh, the manual and the game. You know, if that if that's worth five bucks to you, they're awesome. But I really like this website. I think this website is great for displaying these types of games. This is, in my opinion, the best way to do it. But uh, like I said, there's numerous ways. Uh, there are numerous cheaper ways. There's more DIY ways. You can even be a f***ing creep and carve out your DS box. I know uh, it's kind of annoying to buy games that, you know, you just, you don't have a method to display, even if you're not displaying them to be like, oh, I own 3D Tetris. It's more so like you want to display it so then you yourself can see which games that you own and it makes it more likely that you'll play them because you see them and you're like, that sounds fun. It can be an annoying experience, but finding ways to display these 
is incredibly fun. Uh, even then, like, even now that I've found ways to display these, just going on this website and, and buying, uh, the, the cases that I need is a fun experience because it's, it's that feeling of, like, completing something. You, you feel, you feel whole after you get the Metroid 2 case. So yeah, I hope this really helped out some of you in your quest to display 3D Tetris. Game collecting should be a full-time job. This is a lot of work, but it's always fun. Uh, it feels like, you know, you, you're, you're accomplishing history here by going through each and every one of these games and, and being like, yeah, I know a lot about 3D Tetris, go f*** yourself. And being able to display them is important, whether you care about collecting or not, I think we can all agree on that. So, just find the method of displaying that works for you. Just please, God, do not carve out this case.